This session is divided into three main parts. I will present each part and at the end of each of these sections, there will be a five minute Q&A. Now, if you have a question regarding what was presented for that particular section, please send your questions to our, uh, to our chat moderator, Rosalie Moreno. At the end of that particular session, I will ask Rosalie if there are any questions. And due to time limitations, I may not be able to answer every question, but at the end of this presentation, I will provide you with my contact so we can take this all off offline. All right? So are we ready to go? All right. I'm just going to... Okay, so what are the session objectives? Today we will be talking about our key players. Who are the key players for online contests? From there, we will take a look at behind the scenes logistics. And then lastly, what are the best practices and tips for a fair contest? So why do we hold Toastmasters speech contests in the first place? First, we like to provide competitive speaking experience for Toastmasters members. Secondly, we provide interesting education programs for members and the public. And thirdly, we provide the audience an opportunity to learn by observing proficient speakers. Now, I'm saying to you that putting on, running and executing a Toastmaster contest an online Toastmaster contest for that, for that matter, it doesn't have to be a hair raising, a head banging, or even a hair pulling kind of experience. We could help you with that. So let's go through the first session. Who are the key players for these online speech contests? First, we have the contest chair, the chief judge, the two timers, your sergeant at arms, and the Zoom master. So what are some of their responsibilities? So we'll go through each and every one of them. The main responsibility of the contest chair includes to plan, to organize, and to promote the contest, to select the chief judge, because the chief judge and the contest chair will be working closely together to make sure that the cues and transitions throughout the contest is smooth. Works also with the chief judge, the Zoom master, the timers and the sergeant arms to establish online processes. Assists in selecting contest uh, officials, except for the tiebreaking judge because that the tiebreaking judge should be secret to everyone but the chief judge. The eligibility of the contestants, who are in the contest, provides the contestants briefing, determines the agenda for online contests, provides speech contest materials for everybody, and that includes sending all the material to the chief judge in order for the chief judge to provide all the appropriate forms to his or her officials. And then of course is responsible to submit the notification winner to the next level of the contest. So if you're at the club level, you need to provide this form to the area uh, contest chair. And also to send all the certificates to the participants and to the winners of your contest. The chief judge, what are the remote main responsibilities of the chief judge? Works with the contest chair to establish those processes, the online processes. The chief judge is responsible for the appointment and the council of voting judges, ballot counters, timers, and of course is responsible for selecting his or her secret tie-breaking judge. Puts on a judge's briefing for all the contest officials. Puts on a separate briefing for the tie-breaking judge because the tie-breaking judge should never be part of the voting judge's briefing because the tie-breaking judge needs to remain secret. Puts together the protest and disqualification processes. What is the processes for that? 
on an online uh, environment, oversees the ballot counting, notifies the contest winner to the contest chair. So the contest chair will be able to announce who the winner of your contest is. Also to ensure that the destruction of ballots and tally sheets is, is, um, is also followed through the protocols of the Toastmasters uh, instructions. The timers, there shall be two timers for every single contest and their main responsibility of these two timers include managing and timing and signaling for the entire speech contest. It's not only about timing for the contestants, but for all the minutes of silence, for the evaluation contest, timing for the test speaker and so on. Timer number two should be selected to time and signal speeches, time the minute of silence, for example. And then of course we have timer number one, who is the official timer times each speaker. I must also add that timer number two also needs to time the speaker because they need to signal for their devices as well. But timer number one is responsible for completing the official timing sheet for the, for the chief judge and for the contest itself. Timer number one records and completes the time record sheet. And then of course, to submit that sheet to the chief judge at the end of every contest. How about the sergeant at arms? This is an important role as well. The main responsibilities of the sergeant at arms first is to greet our guests. Have as many guests go and participate in your online contest as possible. The more the merrier, they say. Introduces the contest chair and may also go through a few housekeeping items as well. The sergeant at arms should be allocated to supervise the evaluation speech and the table topics contestants. Just sort of think about how this process may work if we were in, in, in an in-person contest. There will always be a sergeant at arms to make sure that somebody manages and supervises these contestants. And that is no different in an online environment. Also, the sergeant at arms may be asked to supervise and manage the chat, chat function if one is using. But that is up to the contest chair and other officials in your contest. All right, the Zoom master. Most importantly, it is the Zoom master because if we don't have somebody working on the platform, there will be no online contest. So it's really important to select somebody who is an online master, not necessarily the Zoom because it really depends on the the platform that you choose to use for your online contest. So what are some of the responsibilities for the Zoom Master? Zoom Master is responsible for setting up the meeting, the platform, manages the technical functions of the platform itself, the testing and the settings of the platform, creates and manages breakout rooms for all of those individuals who need to go to these breakout rooms. For example, if you choose to do a judge's briefing before the contest be begins, make sure that the Zoom master know who these individuals are and creates a breakout room for him or her to throw these people into the breakout room so that they can have their briefing, for example. Or how about when it's time for the contestants, for the evaluation contestants to be thrown into a breakout room so they're not in your main contest um, environment things like that. So make sure that this person understands how to do that. Of course, admit contestants, contest officials and guests into your contest room. All right, so those are some of the roles of an online contest. We are at the end of this section. As you can see, that is a, a scenic, Lookout from the Palu'u Valley on the big island of Hawaii, 
This is my pre-COVID time when I visited this beautiful island. We are now open for questions. So if I could ask Rosalie if there are any questions for this particular section. Thank you, Linda. Yes, we do have one question. And the question is, can the chair also be the Zoom master? Great question. Can the chair also be the Zoom master? I will tell you now that through experience, I don't know about you, unless you have eight arms and eight eyes, I would say it's going to be very difficult because you're trying to ensure that your contestants are together, you're connecting with the chief judge and trying to work out the technical difficulties. It would be a very difficult task, a monumental task, I might add, to be both, to play both roles. If at all possible, my suggestion, and I'm sure that those who have actually worked online is to actually have these two roles separated. That would be my answer to you. And if we'd like to go further, you know, in this discussion, um, I will be providing you with my contact information so that you can actually email me and perhaps we can take it offline as well. All right, Rosalie, is there another question? Yes, if the tie-breaking judge is secret, how do we keep that secret during briefings in breakout rooms? What we can do, and we do have a great answer for this, is actually if you can actually help try to do your briefings maybe at least a day or two before the contest begins. And the reason why is because we're pretty much all at home unless we're out there gallivanting when we shouldn't be. We should all be at home and hopefully find a time, a suitable time, maybe 30 minutes tops, if you can help it, to try to meet with all your contest officials and do the briefings at least a day or two. It would actually save you a lot of stress because let's just say that there's something that happened and one of the judges couldn't make it for that time period when you're actually having the briefing before the contest and now you're kind of strapped for time because the contest is now beginning at seven. The suggestion is for you to actually have it way ahead of time if you could help it. And especially for the tie-breaking judge because this person needs to be briefed separately from everybody else. And so that should be easily done if you could actually set a meeting together. Rosalie, thank you. Yes. A question. Sure. Are cameras supposed to be turned off when speakers speak? For a club contest, we like to hopefully have the environment to be a warm environment. I would say that if you were in a bigger contest, let's just say at the district level, yes, it is um, appropriate to do that because it lessens the amount of distraction. But at the club level, you probably, I'm thinking that the audience wouldn't be huge. And sometimes it's nice for the contestants to see an audience, to react to their speeches. So it would probably be okay to leave the video on at a club level and maybe even at an area level, but that is really up to the contest officials, to the contestants to see what their, what their confidence level is, whether it's okay for them to have everybody leave their cameras on. All right, it looks like we still have, have a couple minutes for questions. Okay. Rosalie? Sure. Yeah. Um, can a person be the chair for the table topic contest when that person is competing in the international speech contest? If you are competing in the oh, international. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, if you're competing in the international and you would love to be the chair, I see no reason why you couldn't, but let's just say that you're planning to, to hold all three contests all in one go in one setting and trying to swap contest chairs in between, it would make it really hard for the online contest, especially for the flow and for the continuity of the contest. So my advice to you is that unless you plan to hold your international contest on a different day than your table topics contest, 
there shouldn't be a problem for the uh, person who's competing in the international to be the contest chair for the table topics, for example. But if you're planning to host all three contests or even two contests in one day or in one sitting, it might be a good idea for you to, to stick with one contest chair. Okay, next question. Yes? For, for the table topic, how do we ensure there is no cheating? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, for table topic contest. <clears throat> well, for table topic, how do we ensure there is no cheating? How do we ensure that there is no cheating for the table topics? Yeah. That's why we need to ensure that the breakout rooms are provided for the contestants if you are not the first table topic speaker a contestant, for example, the rest of the table topics contestants should be thrown into the breakout room. And you may even have the, start, the sergeant at arms to also be thrown into that same breakout room to supervise and manage that none of the contestants accidentally press the leave button in the contestant room to be part of the contest room. And if there is a breach, there is possibility that there might be a disqualification or if it's done accidentally, make sure that the contest stops. The sergeant at arms connects with the contest chair and said there's been a breach, that somebody accidentally left the room to stop the contest and to put that contestant back into the room. All right, it looks like that five minutes set up for the Q&A session. It looks like that there may be a lot of questions that have been sent this way. Perhaps we can take it offline when we, um, um, when I actually provide you with the information at the end of the session. So my apologies, but we do have time limitations. All right, the next section is all about behind the scenes logistics. We will be talking about selecting your online platform. Secondly, establishing processes and methodologies. This is gonna be the big, biggest section. We're talking about your communication tools. And then lastly, rehearsals and test calls. All right, selecting your online platform, which is it? Is it really gonna be Zoom? Or is it gonna be GoToMeetings? Or is it gonna be something else than other than these two? But when you're selecting your online platform, please be mindful of what these minimal requirements are. The platform should be reliable and flexible. You should also have the capability to mute and unmute any of your audience members and your contestants. The capability to create separate breakout rooms. And then of course, have a recording option when it is applicable. Establishing processes and methodologies. Prior to the briefings and contests, here are some of the things that you should know before the contest begins. Share your tutorials for the platform with your contestants, your contest officials and attendees. Encourage all who participate in your contest to download and familiarize themselves with the platform. In case of equipment or software limitations, identify the process for contest officials to complete and submit forms. For example, some of us who are, I mean, pretty much we're all at home, we may not actually have access to printers to plan, print off your ballots, for example, or your eligibility forms for you to complete. There has to be a way for them to complete these forms online as an e-form. All right, so some those things need to be communicated to those who are participating in your contest. Determine a process for protests in advance. What will that look like? Do we need to make sure that the judges are briefed in advance? Do we need to let the Zoom master know that we need to throw all the judges and the chief judge into a breakout room to talk about this protest. So all of those things have to be worked on before the contest begins. 
And lastly, know how to respond if there are technological issues. What happened if that does arise? For example, if anybody has connection losses, audio or visual losses, or, or video losses. Determine how that's going to look and what needs to be done in order to resolve these technological difficulties. And at the end of the day, it's actually the chief judge that decides how long the contest should be paused. If you can't get anybody back online again because of, let's just say, a, a power outage, which I'm hoping that it doesn't happen to anybody, but that can happen, you may want to stop the contest altogether and leave the contest and let everybody know that you're going to have to reconvene at a different time and maybe a different date especially if your power outage, because it is winter time and we're all around the province, who knows what that windstorm can do? It can just blow everybody's power out. <laughs> so unfortunately that will have to be mitigated and have to be known what you need to do in case of emergencies such as that. Before the, and before the contest begins, the judge needs to conduct his or her briefings. So what does that look like? All the, all the judges, ballot counters and timers must be briefed using a live audio and video conference tool. So perhaps use the same platform as your contest platform. The judge also needs to send and also to receive all the necessary contest forms to all the contest officials in advance of the contest, especially for the judge's eligibility form that needs to be signed and dated and completed before the contest can occur or to be them to be active and participate in the contest. Plans for responding to any technological issues or difficulties. Review the speaking area with the judges so they know what to expect when they actually are um, actually judging the contestants. Provide guidelines for how protests will be handled and make sure that the ballots, all ballots, and the judges sheets, the timing sheets, rename anonymous. You have to find a way, or I mean, uh, not the form, sorry, my apologies. So the anonymity, anonymity, sorry, it's Saturday morning, guys, of all judges and ballot, ballot counters must rename, re, sorry, remain, my tongue is tied now, anonymous online. So you may want to rename on your selected platform. Some people did ask whether your judges and ballot counters should rename or remain anonymous for a club contest. Well, it's kind of hard to do if your club is small. So there is a bit of flexibility and leeway for clubs to not do that. So if your club choose not to do that, you just want to make sure that everybody has an understanding that that is okay. And, uh, but if you feel that you need to make sure that all your judges and ballot counters remain anonymous, then that needs to be respected as well. So you can leave it up to the club, but at the area, the division and at the district level, we wanna make sure that these judges and ballot counters remain anonymous. All right, moving on to the timers. Again, they need to be, be to be briefed by the chief judge. The timers and the chief judge need to determine which method that the timers are gonna be using to signal for timing. Ensure that uh, the timers training session is conducted in advance before the contest, a day or two. There must be some uh, some way of communicating for the contest chair for the minute of silence throughout the contest. And then of course, to review timing procedures and rows for timer number one, who is gonna be your official timer documenting on the official timing sheet and timer number two, who is responsible for signaling the contestants and the contest chair. Review all cues and transitions with timing devices for the entire contest.
what to do in terms of conducting contestant briefing. This is up to the uh, contest chair. The contest chair must brief all contestants using a live audio and video conferencing tool. Again, let's just use the same platform. It's easier for everybody. Sending and receiving contestant forms. We also must be mindful to accommodate contestants who have disabilities. What to do in the event of online contests for those who are unable to see or, or who are visually impaired. For example, you have to go through those protocols with your entire team and how that will look like. And of course, that is to be shared among all contestants and not just the contestant with the disability so that everybody has an understanding. And of course, the judges as well, because they will be judging on each of the contestants. How to draw for speaking orders. The suggestion is to use an online randomization tool for that because if we were doing it in person, we would be drawing a number out of a hat, for example. Set the speaking area for each contestant. Have each contestant understand what is appropriate for your contest in terms of the speaking area. Is it gonna be from the waist up or is it gonna be from the chest up? And how far is it from the left or right of your screen, for example? Six, or signing a video release form if you're planning to uh, video your contestant. And that normally doesn't happen unless it's, it's at the district level. Reviewing cues and transitions for each of your contestants. For example, when will the contestant be introduced and when can the contestant start? You might have a two second test for your contestant before the contestant actually starts speaking. Pin the timer. The contestant should always know where that timer is because that is vital to everybody's uh, speech and presentation. During the contest, the Zoom master must take control to manage the online environment. The arrival times, what time should all these players come into your online environment. For example, your judges may want to come at least 30 minutes to 45 minutes early before everybody else does. Your guests should be asked to come in 15 minutes early so that when you're actually starting on time, it starts on time. Is it appropriate to have a, um, virtual breakdowns for anybody or should it be blacked out? or should your faces just be showing? That must be communicated among your entire uh, planning team for this contest. Setting up the speaking area for your contestants. Backup devices for contest officials in case if there are technical difficulties, if something goes down, what will that look like? Cues and transitions throughout the entire contest online speech contest statements. For example, because we are now online, there is actually an online speech contestant statement section in your um, document that is provided by Toastmaster International. It's called the best practices for online speech contest. And that can be found on a particular page, which I can't find now, but I will share with that you later. How to submit and count ballots, for example as well as submitting ballots, uh, your judges' ballots, conducting interviews, and of course the award of, um, the award of any awards for all your winners, the awards presentation and the interview process. After the contest, we have to be mindful of deleting all your digital files and that includes any files that were sent through your text messaging, through your email systems, or any sorts of messaging systems. WhatsApp, that's the other one. Because if we were in, in person, the chief judge would ask everybody to shred their ballots in their homes, for example, or away from the contest site. It's no different if your files are in e-form, 
or in digital form. Follow any paperwork that is appropriate that needs to be kept. Notification winner form to the next level and sending certificates to your participants and of course the winners. Communication tools. We have text messaging on your cell phone, a telephone numbers to everybody, especially for those who are planning the contest together as well as with the contestants and all the judges and contest officials and through your email system. So consider using an instant messaging service as the primary form of communication besides your online. And that in could include texting or WhatsApp, for example, or email, a method to share files. So when your judges complete the ballots, are they gonna be taking a picture and sending it through the judges, uh, the chief judge uh, texting? And the chief judge will send that to the ballot counters, for example. Or will it have a, a file share system of some sort that you set up so that the ballot counters and the chief judge could have access to the ballots? And the timing sheet, how will that look like? Will the timers be taking a picture of the timing sheet, timer number one, for example, and send it off to the chief judge? The setup. The we need to be mindful of the connection between all the key players, the contestant and the contest officials. And that might mean taking all your cell phone numbers, for example, so that when you're using this messaging service, if there is a problem, we can message to each other. Or you could set up multiple chats between all the different contest officials, the contest chair and the chief judge, and of course with the Zoom master. Rehearsal and test calls. I personally think it's a great idea to plan and conduct a rehearsal or test call before the live contest because the Zoom master can test the online system or platform. Timers will have the opportunity to practice with selected signaling devices. Contestants can practice with the timers before the actual contest. And the contest chair can work out the cues and transitions between the chief judge, the timers, and the sergeant at arms before the live contest. And the contest chair can assist the contestants in setting the stage, for example, at that point in time. And that can be doubled up as the contestants briefing. All right, this takes me to the end of this particular section of the presentation. Here we have a scenic route to the Rocky Mountains. And again, this was pre-COVID times. It was gorgeous, I must add. All right, the floor is now open to any questions. Rosalie. Sure. <clears throat> the first one we have here is, if there is a power outage at our club and they are doing the contest on the 28th, would they be able to run the club contest at the beginning of February? I think this will need to be discussed with the executive team because there is a timeline to ensuring that the um, all the club contest is completed on that date. But because of extenuating circumstances, there are times where we had um, had given the okay for clubs to complete after the deadline because it's not a fault of yours and it is an environmental disaster, so to speak. Um, there is room for flexibility for cases like this. So no worries. Okay, next question. Is there a randomization that is recommended? Is there what, sorry? Randomization. Oh, I randomization. guess to choose. Oh, the tool yeah. for randomization. Personally, and I must admit, because I'm the chief judge and I'm not involved in any contestant briefing, I haven't used any online tools but I do know people who have, who had uh, gone through and done it with their contestants. So perhaps I can reach out to them and send you the information um, offline. Okay, next question. Why ballot counters need to be anonymous? Um, that is just according to Toastmaster International Rules, 
I don't make up the rules, so I do not have the rationale why they need to be secret. But like I say, in a club contest, if you guys choose to remain not anonymous, I believe that is okay too. But at any contest at a higher level, they do need to remain anonymous. And it's just to provide for a fair playing field for everybody and that there is objectivity and fairness throughout the entire contest. I can't tell you why with the rationale for Toastmasters instructions, but those are the rules. Next question, Rosalie. Yeah. Should you have a judge from another club in the same area that is competing? For a club contest, that is perfectly okay. But when it reaches up to a higher level, especially if they are competing in the same contest, it is not a wise idea. And we think about the optics of judging. We want to make sure that every single judge who is called to judge your online contest should be impartial, uh, should be objective, and there shouldn't be any measure of subjectivity or any short, sort of a dis disparity between any of the clubs. You want to make sure that there is a clean and fair process for, for each of your contests. So a judge who is actually competing in another type of contest. So for example, uh, this particular judge is only competing in the table topics and not in the international. This judge can actually judge for your international contest, for example. I think that would be fair. And because there isn't any sort of, um, I guess, biases involved if you do include this judge in your contest to judge that particular contest, for example. Um, but we can take it further offline to talk more about this if you wish. So you can send me an email at the end of this presentation. Rosalie, the next question. Um, yes, judges. I'm sorry. No, I guess, no, this is just a comment from oh, Carol see. in the chat. It, I, we don't have more questions oh, in the chat. Okay, it is 10.05, so we could save some more questions at the end of this next section. So thank you all for your questions again. All right, we're gonna be talking about best practices and tips because this is where it all comes down to. Always plan ahead and be very organized. And the people that you select to run your contest should have some measure of experience in Toastmaster speech contest because we need to have at least one or two people who actually have the background so that they can actually mentor those who are actually doing it for the first time. I can't imagine them to try to figure all of this out because there is a lot of rules and regulations to remember or to actually look into before a contest actually begins. So make sure that those who are organizing your contest be, be really well organized and be knowledgeable of Toastmaster speech contest protocols. Be aware that the first contest must end before the second contest begins. So what I mean by this is that if you're planning to hold three contests in one go, you must ensure that the international contest must begin and end before your second contest, let's just say your evaluation contest must begin and end and so on. Review all contest materials and documents to everybody, including your contestants, your contest officials before the contest begins and that they have a fair understanding of what it all means and what the expectations are for them to complete these documents. Know each speak contest rules, guidelines and protocols, and that is really important. So always go back to your speech contest rule book and your best practices for online speech document that Toastmaster International had provided for you. It is free for download. So for those of you who haven't done this yet, I encourage you to do this as soon as possible, especially if you are running a contest. Ensure the speech contest rulebook and all other contest resources are always available for referencing during a contest. 
I can't tell you enough that something might come up in terms of a rule that somebody has to go through, especially for the chief judge. So make sure that you have this on hand so that there is an answer for you. If I need to be contacted because something happened during your contest, make sure you contact me before you announce your winner. Because once your winners are announced, that's it. There is no going back. Always use contest scripts. I must tell you that Rodney Denno had created some wonderful scripts for all these contests, and they are also free for download from his website. And I believe that Mimi had sent everybody um, some resources quite some time ago. And I believe that this is one of the resources that is also on this uh, particular document that she has sent to all the VPs of education and presidents of the clubs. Support and work with each other as a team. This is crucial in order for the online contest to be um, to run smoothly. And one of the best online contests um, that I've seen and witnessed just recently occurred just this month, this last Monday. It was with inspirational speakers. They managed and they worked well as a team. They managed to complete three contests within two hours. That is monumental. And if you can manage to try to coordinate that your contest doesn't run for four hours, that would be a monumental feat. And if you feel that you can't do that, please reach out to those of us who worked um, in organizing online speech contests, how you could make sure that your contest can flow as smoothly as theirs. Share resources with each other. I don't care who you are, whether you're from one club to another, from one area to another, from the division, or even between districts, share resources. If you have a better plan of knowing how to complete an online contest, please do share. From what I witnessed on Monday night, I've learned a few things or two, and I've done this for a long time. I would say maybe about six years, <laughs> over six years. So there's always something to learn. Attend other online speech contests so you can observe how other online speech contests actually are put together. Um, it's a great learning opportunity for everyone. And don't be shy to ask for assistance or help because that's what we're here for, all right? Here are some of the resources. We have Mimi, who is your program quality direct, sorry, sorry, Mimi, program quality director. And then of course myself, I have my email address up there just as I do with Mimi. Refer to your speech contest rule book from July the 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. If you're using any rule book that is before these date ranges, then you're using the wrong rule book. Go back on to Toastmaster International uh, website and download the appropriate rule book. The best practices for online speech contest uh, document is also available. The Toastmaster International Speech Contest tutorials is available on their website and it's free for all. So, and they're not very long either. So it shouldn't take too much of your time. And then of course, there is also the speech contest judges training document that you can refer to as well. So I must say all, to all of you, best wishes and good luck with your online speech contest. We're not done yet because there is some time and room for um, some more questions. And then of course, at the end of your contest, just remember <laughs> to sit back and relax in your most comfortable chair because you've done an awesome job. So, Rosalie, do we have any more questions coming my way? Yes, we have a few. The first one refers when you said the first contest must finish before the second contest begins. Does that mean that you have to announce winners of the first contest before moving to the second contest? Or can you announce winners at the end of the various contests that you have run? Right, great question. 
No, the answer is no, you do not need to announce your winners at the end of each contest. So thank you for that. What you need to do though, is make sure that all the judges ballot is collected by the chief judge and then as well as the ballot counters. If you choose to also do the ballot counting at that point in time, that's when it should be done. And then of course the chief judge will know who the winner is. The chief judge can keep it you know, to him or herself until the end of the contest, if that's how the contest chair wants it. But if you want to announce it after the end of each contest, you can do that too. But the option is that you can keep that until the end of the last speech contest. So thank you for that question. Rosalie. Okay, next question. You mentioned online speech contest statement. What is that? Is it the same as best practices? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yes. You mentioned online speech contest statement. Oh, the person, yeah. is, oh, the person is asking, what is that? Is that the same as the best practices? Yes, it is part of best practices, but the um, I do find it, it's actually on page eight in the um, best practices for online speech contest document, which is the PDF document. Um, it's basically a statement that starts by attending this remote area division and it's generally spoken at the area division and district speech contest. You agree to the privacy policy of Toastmaster International. So I have a feeling that it has something to do about the images, right? Because when we're actually in person, we're not actually taping anything, but when you're online, it's possible that the platform that you're using could be taking your personal information, like your privacy information is possible. And it depends on your privacy settings as well. So I think that Toastmaster International put this statement on is to, so that everybody is aware of what those claims and demands and rights and damages are and liabilities in case if anything arises out of the connections. So it all has all to do with privacy and security. That's pretty much what it is. Great question though. Uh, Rosalie, next question. I hope that answers your question. But if not, we can take it offline as well. Okay, somebody's asking if they're gonna be able to get this slide deck to share with their rest of their club officers. Absolutely. Um, I forgot to mention that I would be more than happy to share this slide deck with you. But of course, with the verbal content, I can't share that with you because um, unless it is being taped and, or, or recorded, then that can be shared with you as well. Yes, absolutely. Next question. Um, yeah. How does one determine whether contestants are qualified to compete? All right, so this is a great question. So for the evaluation and the table topics, all you need to, um, for, for the contestant to be eligible is to be a paid member of a club that is in good standing. But for the international, the contestant must also not only be a paid member and for a club to be in good standing, but they must also complete in the traditional path, the confident communicator, six speeches from that, and or to complete two level, um, two le uh, I guess level two pathway level um, in the current education program to compete in that contest. And must not also be a district officer in order to compete. So a district officer includes being um, the executive team like, um, and also area director, division director. So those are considered district officers. And of course, the district chief judge. Great question. Rosalie? Yeah, next question. Could you please talk more of pros and cons of set up virtual background? I think what it is, is uh, whether how much distraction or less distraction for the contestants. Um, it's perfectly okay for anybody to use virtual backgrounds if they wish, but especially for contestants, you might want to choose a neutral background. And it's because the less distraction, the better, because you are being judged by your judges. 
And sometimes for some judges, they may be distracted with your virtual back background. And so therefore your speech may not be heard as well as it should be. So it would be a good idea for all contestants to actually have a neutral background. But for everybody else, yeah, make sure that there's nothing distracting behind you. For example, if you actually have family members walking behind you each and every time because you're now located your camera in the kitchen and all of a sudden something happens and I don't know, visually and the contestant is distracted. So one of the things to mitigate all of this is to, to minimize distractions at any point. And if you do have a virtual background that is not very distracting, then it's perfectly fine to, to have it um, as your background, for example, but make sure that it is okay with your contest officials, your contest chair, for example, because he or she is literally running the show. And so it's up to the contest chair to say yay or nay. I hope that answers your question, but if not, we can take this offline as well. Um, I believe we do have a little bit more time for a few more questions, Rosalie. Yes, one more question. Can a, contest, can a contestant combine their speeches from the legacy program and pathway, or do they need to be completed separately? Oh, um, are you, I gather this person is talking about, about a contestant speech. Is that correct? Yes, I, I believe so. Yes. So when you're actually creating or developing your speech, it's really up to the contestant. If you, let's just say that you had used a particular speech in the traditional path and now you have another speech that you used in the, um, in the new path, you could actually use anything that you want to create your new speech as long as that only 25% of your speech is, um, is used by, okay, so let me say this again, sorry. So only 25% of your speech can actually be um, quoted by somebody else. So the 75% of your speech must be original content. So you could actually use anything that you used before in the traditional path or in the new path. So it's really up to the contestant, but just be mindful that 25% can only be used um, as a quote from another source. 75% yeah. must be original content, at least 75%. Linda, may I jump in for a second? Absolutely. I'm, I'm hearing that question a bit differently. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I thought uh, the question was, can you have a combination of the old legacy program and the level one? to be oh. eligible yes. and uh, I yes. think that that's what the question was referring to. So. Oh, um, I see. Oh, my yeah. 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 So the answer yes. would be no. <laughs> yes, that um, is right. Yes. Yeah. Either, either they have qualification from the old legacy program for six speeches in the competent communicator, or they have a level two completion. Yes, that is correct. It's or, it's not and. <laughs> yes, my apologies, Carol. And, 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 and to the person who asked this question, I guess I have um, wax in my ear and I couldn't hear. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? There is one more. Can you oh. please talk or, suge or suggest something about the speaking area? All right, so it is actually noted in the, in the online speech documents. Make sure that you have an understanding about what is acceptable in the speaking area, for example. So for example, make sure that all the contestants understand whether they should be, um, if they want to stand and deliver their speech and it, focuses on their entire body or if they prefer to sit down and present their speech and from the chest up make sure that there is some measure of consistency or standardization between each contestant so that there isn't um, any sort of distractions from one method to another for some clubs 
it may be acceptable for you to have a varying degree of, um, of the stage area. Some may choose to stand up and see their entire body and some may not want to. And if the contest chair says it's fine for them to do that, um, it's really up to them. But for me personally, I would rather see some measure of standardization in terms of the stage area. Make sure that when your camera is focused on you, uh, the contestant, that the audience can see your face, can see part of your body, for example, as a minimum, and that you understand where you will not be seen from the right and to the left of your camera, for example. So you, before the contest actually begins, it's a great idea, like I say, to do a rehearsal with your contest team to make sure that how you're gonna be presenting is perceived by others to be um, acceptable uh, for your online contest. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, one more just came. What can be done if the speaker loses the connection in the middle of the speech? Aha, uh -huh. wonderful question. So if, so if there is a disconnection in the middle of the speech, that's why it's important for us, everybody who's involved in the contest to have each other's number. The contestant, so if we can actually see that there is a technical difficulty, then the contest chair will stop the contest. The Zoom master or whoever is working on the platform will need to work with the contest chair to work on resolving the technical difficulty. The chief judge will also be involved to determine once all the difficulties had been resolved, when to start that contest again. The contestant will have the opportunity to be given an extra 30 seconds to complete his or her speech. The contestant will start where he or she had left off before the difficulty began. It would be incredibly a good idea for the contest chair to note when the contestant had actually stopped speaking. For example, what, were the, what was the last word that was uttered or the last phrase or sentence that was uttered before the, the, um, the technical issue arose? And then once the speech contest begins, give the contestant a few seconds to pin the timer and to also give this person the opportunity to, to make sure that everything is actually functioning so that we can actually see the person, everybody can hear the, the, the contestant as well. Once that is together, we will ask the timer to ensure that the timing will only begin when the contestant utters the first word from his or her speech. The timer will also be notified to ensure when to stop the, the timing and when to start. And then of course the timer will also be instructed to give the speaker an extra 30 seconds. Um, of course, you know, clapping down the contestant is never a go for any contest, but the speaker will, I mean, the timer number one will have to identify what the timing would be uh, for that speaker. So for example, if it was the international contest, disqualification time will not be more than 7, 30, uh, seven minutes and 30 seconds, but, but the new disqualification time will be uh, what is more than eight minutes, for example, because that would be the extra 30 seconds that is given to the speaker. I hope this answers the question. Yes? Okay, it looks like that we are running out of time. So thank you everybody for your participation. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass it back to Mimi. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for watching this video on the Toastmasters District 96 YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel for replays of our volunteer run workshops, contests and other events that are happening in our district. 
like this video to show your appreciation for the volunteers who work hard to run these events. And remember, we are all volunteers. Thank you.